And today we will be looking at uh, the 20th chapter of Revelation uh, from the 11th verse till the 15th verse. We will be looking at uh, from the 11th verse till the 15th verse. I would request uh, one of you to kindly uh, read this passage. Book of Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 to 15. I request one of you to kindly read this. Any brother, any brother can do this. You can unmute and read. One of you, please read it. Shall I read, Anand? Oh, okay, go ahead. <clears throat> great white throne judgment. And I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, dear sister, for that reading. Uh, friends, okay, I've been explaining it to you about the entire book of Revelation uh, in the last weeks. And I told you this is how the book is being divided uh, for our uh, understanding. Uh, so I really want to uh, give one more explanation on this uh, to all of you. Uh, Okay, as I told you earlier, uh, the book is being divided like this. And uh, now as you look at this, this is the present church age that we are in. Present church age that we are in, uh, which will be given in the first three chapters, the church age. And then we have seen the fourth and fifth chapters where the rapture takes place of the church. The believers will be taken away. That's what we call it as a, a rapture. The Lord will come secretly in the midair. And nobody knows. But the believers will be taken away. That's what we have seen in the fourth chapter. And we have also seen the scene in heaven. How the scene will be in heaven in fourth and fifth chapters together. Then comes the, the important portion, which is the, uh, the years of tribulation from the sixth chapter onwards to the 18th chapter. As I already was telling you, during this uh, seven years of tribulation, the last three and a half years will be called as the great tribulation where the Antichrist reveals himself. That's what I told you. The revelation of Antichrist will be done during that period. The second half of the uh, tribulation period. Then we have the 19th chapter 
the return of Christ with all the saints. He comes down with all the saints. If we have, we, if we have been raptured, we will also come down with the Lord at that point of time. And there will be thousand years of rain. That's what we have seen last time. The millennium reign of Christ. The thousand years of reign. How that reign will be, we have seen that. Last time I have explained it in details. And then after that, in the 20th chapter, uh, we are going to see the judgment today. But before that, what we have seen last time was, uh, 20th chapter, first 10 verses, what we have seen was the Actually, the thousand years of rain, millennium rain, and also how at one point of time, the, the devil that was been put in the bottomless pit was brought in again for a short period of time. And then later, he was taken back into the, into the uh, punishment again, thrown into the fire, thrown into the fire. That's what we have seen in the 20th chapter, verse 10. So that will be the final destiny, destruction of Satan, the devil. That will be the final destruction. So no more the presence of devil we see after that. So now comes the, the actual uh, uh, the portion for today's study. That will be from the 11th verse till the 15th verse. What we are seeing is the judgment of the dead. Judgment of the dead. So how does this portion talk? We will go, we are going to see that anyway. But then the last two chapters, we are not going to look at. The last two chapters talk about the new heaven and the new earth, which will be the eternal state of a man. Eternal state of a man. The new heaven and the new earth, which I am not going to take it up. And today we are going to close the study anyway. So that will be the the entire book, uh, book uh, overall view that we can see the book of Revelation. So coming back now to the great white throne judgment. This is called as the great white throne judgment. All are judged, but all are not condemned. We need to understand this. Everybody will be there. Even we will be there. Believers will be there. Unbelievers will be there. But we are not going to be judged if we are believers. If we are believers. We are not going to be condemned. Everybody will be judged. The believers will be commended for what they have done. But they will not be condemned. That's what we are going to see. And now it says that John is seeing this vision. John is looking at this vision. And he is able to see a, a great white throne. He is able to see a great white throne. John. And on that white throne he is seated. On that white throne he is seated. The Lord is seated there. That's what he sees. And then the Bible says there. The earth and the heavens fled away from his presence. There was no place for them. They were fled away. Why? Why did that happen? When they saw this, the Lord sitting on the, on the throne, judgment throne, white throne, the heaven and earth ran away, fled away from the Lord. And that's what will happen, my dear friends. I'll tell you why. They fled away. Why they fled away? Because the throne is great. It is large. And it is ominous. Very pompous. Majestic. And it is a white throne. White throne symbolizes the purity. And the holiness. Of the one who sits upon it. Naturally. Nobody can face the Lord in, its com in, a, in his complete purity. He is absolute pure. There is no sin in him. 
no impurity in him and he seated there he seated there and uh, even the heaven and earth could not stand before him could not stand before him and they run away my dear friends if you look at isaiah the book of isaiah chapter 6 the same kind of a picture you see when isaiah saw this vision the lord does uh, sitting there the glory of the lord filled the temple and there were six angels and uh, they have six wings that they were angels and they had six wings and with the two wings they were covering the face that's what the bible says there with the two wings they were covering the face why they could not see the purity of god the holiness of god and there they were praising holy 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 lord god almighty they were praising unto the lord for the holiness that he possesses holiness that he possesses absolute purity that's what we see about the lord and that's why it is called the white throne judgment talks about the purity it is symbolizes about the purity and the holiness of the lord jesus christ so the judgment uh, that proceeds from there it also means that it will be perfect it will be righteous and right judgment because the one who is seated on that is a perfect god is a is a righteous god is a god of justice and he will make no mistakes in judging the people and we can be rest assured that the judgment will be perfectly just and right that's what we see in the fourth chapter we have already seen when we had the study there in the fourth chapter of revelation verses 2 and 3 we see there at once i was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it and the one who sat there had the appearance of a jasper and ruby a rainbow that shone like an emerald and circled the throne look at the picture of the throne the beautiful picture the one who seated is like a jasper and ruby shining forth shining forth in his majesty in his holiness and that's what exactly we see the picture here even john is talking here when he comes to this particular point of time and we can see the same kind of a thing fleeing away from the presence of god the heaven and earth are fleeing away from the presence of god at that point of time you see uh, revelation chapter 6 i'm just reminding you what we have studied earlier i watched as he opened the sixth seal there was a great earthquake the sun the sun turned black like a sackcloth <coughs> made of a goat hair the whole moon turned blood red and the stars in the sky fell to the earth as a fixed drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind look at that the stars from the heaven drop like a fruit like a fig fig uh, uh, like a fig tree the fruits drop from there the figs drop from there the heavens receded like a scroll receded turn it is rolled away like a like a like a scroll the heavens and every mountain and island was removed from it, from its place what a what a majestic and great and powerful god he is when he seated on the throne we see the real picture of the lord jesus christ the powerful the majestic picture of the lord jesus christ the one who is seated on the throne and nothing can stand before him nothing can stand before and then now comes the next uh, 12th verse in the 20th chapter of revelation this is a very important uh, thing again and i saw the dead great and small <laughs> standing before the throne and the books were opened another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books so what does it reveal all humanity is standing before the throne great and small i tell you something god allowed the people to stand there otherwise we cannot stand 
I don't know how they could stand right in front of the throne. Probably he made some lessened his uh, glory. I don't know. But they were able to stand there because they have to give an account to God. And they were not fleeing away looking at the majesty of God. God allowed them to stay there. God allowed them to stay there because they have to be uh, taken account. All humanity. But I already told you, all humanity will be there, but all humanity will not be condemned. There are believers and unbelievers there standing. Believers will be commended. They will be appreciated for their service, for their faithfulness. The unbelievers will be condemned. They will be judged. Both the righteous and the wicked seen standing before the seat of judgment. This is a beautiful picture at the great white throne judgment. You know, we know this uh, parable the Lord was talking. When a man uh, has sown the seeds, when the weeds were growing, it seems the enemy came and sown the uh, weeds. Weeds. When the weeds were going, the weeds were sown by the enemy. And the, together with the weeds and the weeds, both of them grew together. When the workers came and said, can we cut them, the weeds off? He said, no, let them grow together until the harvest time, until the harvest time. And this is exactly what the Lord did till now. He's allowing both the unbelievers, the wicked people, the evil people and the believers growing together, coming together and they will stand together at the, at the judgment seat. The Lord is going to judge. You need not judge one another. For both your brother and yourself will stand before the judgment seat of God. You need not judge anybody today. Don't make a judgmental comment on anybody's life. Sometimes we pass on comments uh, and say that, I know this person will definitely go to hell. And this person will definitely go to heaven. The Lord will not leave him, we say. Sometimes we say the Lord will punish him. As if we know everything. As if we are the one who is going to judge the people. We make comments like that about people. I want to tell you, all of us will come there. Because he is the only one qualified to judge each one of us. He is the only one qualified to judge each one of us. We need to stand there. And uh, you need not condemn anybody. If anyone is worthless, the perfect judge, the righteous judge, the Lord Jesus Christ will condemn him. Don't worry about that. You need not worry about their life and how their end will be. So how will the judgment be like? Let's see that also. How will be the judgment? First of all, the judgment is Universal. Why do I say universal? Because here in the 12th verse, I read it like this. I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. What does this reveal here? Great and small, standing before the throne. It is a universal judgment. Nobody is left out. Everybody in this world are gathered there. No matter what language they belong to, what culture they belong to, what country they belong to, what background they belong to, what kind of a life they have lived up to, they all will be brought. There is no partiality shown there. It is a universal judgment. Every person will be there. Every person. No one will be left out. It's full of justice. It is full of justice. And that's why big and small, rich and poor, educated and uneducated, in a mega cities and the poor, poor villages, wherever the people are, all kinds of people, 
they will gather at the judgment seat. That's why we call it, this judgment is universal. No one will miss out there. No one will miss out. From every language, from every tribe, from every nation, people will come there. Will be standing before the judgment seat of God. What a picture that would be. What a picture that would be. But who are these great and small? <laughs> Let's think about that for a while. Who are these great and small? All nations heads. Every country head will be there. All presidents and prime ministers of every country. All presidents and prime ministers of every country. You look at uh, now North Korea. The president is a very tough man. Very cruel person. North Korean president Kim. Kim Jong-un. He will be there tomorrow. He never ever allows any other religion into his country today. Only he is the dictator and what he says will rule. But tomorrow he's going to come there and stand before the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Russian president. Russians, they don't believe in God. The Russian president, uh, that uh, Vladimir Putin. They don't believe in God. They don't accept any Christianity to come there. They are like an atheist, no God for them. They are communist. They believe in communism. And he will be there. Now there is a big war going on between Russia and President and Ukraine. We all know that. Even Volodymyr Zelensky, the Ukraine president will be there. The American president, Joe Biden will be there. Even before all the president, Barack Obama will be there. The UK president, I'm talking about, UK prime minister who has recently been appointed. The Rishi Sunak. He's an Indian. He's a Hindu. <laughs> He's a young man, 42 year old. And when he made an oath, very sadly, in UK, he made an oath on Bhagavad Gita. Being a prime minister. Look at the state of the country. And whatever he can do to the country tomorrow, I want to tell you, my dear friends, even he will come and stand before the judgment of the Lord, before the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be there. Pakistan Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif will be there. And today we see these RSS groups are there. Too many groups are there. They are the anti-Christian elements, anti-Christian groups. Mohan, ba Mohan Bhagwat will be there. The BJP president, uh, uh, JP Nadda will be there. Gujarat uh, uh, chief minister will be there. Bupendra Bhai Patel. Orissa chief minister will be there. Naveen. Look at these people. The Karnataka chief minister, Bomai. <laughs> The terrorist will be there. Osama bin Laden will be there. The Al-Qaeda leaders will be there. All the kings and the queens will stand at the judgment seat of God. The Andhra, the Andhra chief minister, even Jagan Mohan will be there. The Ch Telangana chief minister, KCR will be there. All the celebrities, the film stars, the sports stars, the models, the national groups, the ministers, the political leaders, every member of the royal family, the MPs and MLAs and government, all the governors, you name anybody in this world, my dear brothers and sisters, they all have to come to the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ one day. <laughs> what a great God we have. You know, today many people can stop Christianity just like that. I want to tell you. Let them do anything to Christians. Let them stop the Christianity to, 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 to develop, to improve, to spread out. But I want to tell you, every leader who wags the tail, 
one day they have to come and stand before the judgment seat of god what a great god <laughs> rich and the poor will be there and that's why i said every knee has to bow the bible says every tongue has to confess that jesus is lord that jesus is lord that is the day of the judgment it is a universal judgment i am talking about the judgment is universal there is no partiality shown great and small will be brought to the judgment seat of god no one can escape no one can escape are you are you imagining it what how blessed we are to have the lord god as our savior the lord jesus as our savior and lord we are the blessed people because one day they all have to come and bow their heads in shame bow their heads in shame for rejecting him and secondly the judgment will be personal i told you that it is universal first of all the judgment is universal everybody will be there and second it is personal in romans chapter 14 verses 11 and 12 says as it is written as surely as i live says the lord every knee will bow before me and every tongue will acknowledge that i am god so then each of us will give an account of ourselves to god you understand this <laughs> each of us will give an account of ourselves to god we are going to stand there to give an account about ourselves not about, not about anybody else the, the, the lord will never ask you on the judgment day how about your neighbor how about your colleague he is not going to take the testimony of yours in order to judge people not based on your testimony he will never ask you what kind of a person is your neighbor no he will never ask you that he will ask about you he will ask about me the lord will not ask you to give an account of someone else he will ask about us only some must have deliberately rejected the lord jesus christ some must have scoffed at, scoffed at him some must have rejected his word and his law some must have rejected his salvation and forgiveness that he offers and they have to give an account for all that the lord will ask them why you have rejected why you have gone away why you have thrown away my word why you have rejected this forgiveness that i offer to you the lord will ask you one day all that look at john's gospel chapter 12 verse 48 the one who rejects me and does not receive my words has a judge the word that i have spoken will judge him on the last day this is the lord jesus himself saying this the one who rejects me will be judged on that day on which day on this day where we stand before the white throne great white throne and thirdly the judgment will be divine firstly i said it is universal and secondly i said it is personal we have to give an account of ourselves to god and thirdly the judgment will be divine because the judge is divine the judge the lord jesus christ is holy the judge the lord jesus christ is just god a righteous god in omniscient god he knows everything nothing can be hidden from him and the judge is impartial the lord doesn't show any favoritism no favoritism works out there 
so god will not make any mistake my dear friends it will be a judgment according to the truth the judgment according to the truth whatever you are whatever i am we will be judged accordingly that's what i said everybody will be judged according to what they have done that's what's written here in the 12th verse according to what they have done and the books were opened <laughs> books were opened you see in revelation chapter 17 the beast that you saw was and is not and is about to rise from the bottomless pit and go to destruction and the dwellers on earth whose name have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will marvel to see the beast because it was and is not and is to come the the, the dwellers on earth whose names have not been written in the book of life that's been mentioned again their names are not written in the book of life in the third chapter the revelation the one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments i will never blot his name out of the book of life look at that again i will confess his name before my father before his angels what a great honor that is if we are washed in the blood of jesus christ we are clothed in white our our clothes our garments are washed in the blood of jesus and our names will be written in the book of life and they will not be blotted out again the names will not be blotted out again even daniel prophesied the book of daniel chapter 12 verse 1 says at that time shall arise a michael mikael the great prince who has charge of your people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never been since there was a nation till that time but at that time your people shall be delivered delivered every one whose name shall be found written in the book look at that everybody whose name is written in the book will be delivered by the lord jesus christ praise be to god praise be to god my dear friends i don't know who you are sitting here in this bible study if you are not washed in the book in the blood of jesus christ your name will not be there in the book of life if you are not repented of your sins if you are not asked for forgiveness if you have not confessed your sins before god your name will not be there in the book of life remember that and everybody who is delivered and whose name is found in the book of life they will not be condemned they will not be condemned look at the 21st chapter which we are not seeing but there is one particular text there in the 27th verse but nothing unclean will ever enter it nor anyone who does what is detestable detestable or false but only those who are written in the lamb's book of life will enter into heaven oh, what a beautiful picture that is what a confirmation that is a new a, a new heaven and a new earth the lord is going to give us the eternal life and who will who will claim that eternal life who will attain it only those who are written whose names are written in the lamb's book of life you understand <laughs> these were the books opened up even in philippians when paul is writing to the church in philippi i really like this uh, text in the fourth chapter of verse 3 paul was very sure of this he says i ask you also true companion help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life look at that paul was very much assured confirmed that 
those who worked with him their names are written in the book of life those who get involved in the gospel work in the kingdom business if you are involved in the ministry of god in preaching the gospel in saving souls in praying for the lost whatever way that you are getting involved in god's work your name will be written in the book of life and now comes what will he judge about what will he judge first of all we need to know that the lord will judge our secrets look at romans chapter 2 please i will read it for you romans chapter 2 i am reading verse 16 i am reading verse 16 this will take place on the day when god judges people's secrets through jesus christ as my gospel declares the lord will judge the secrets of the people that's what the bible says here the secrets are judged what are the secrets every motive is a secret i tell you i will explain to you you know people have certain motives behind what they do and those motives none of, none of us know only that person knows and god knows the motives behind right i'll give you some examples but before that turn to first corinthians chapter 4 1st corinthians chapter 4 i am reading verse 5 i am reading verse 5 therefore judge nothing before the appointed time wait until the lord comes he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and expose the motives of the heart look at that he will expose the motives of the heart at that time each one will receive their praise from god friends our secrets are our motives and our motives will be judged that day what are the motives the motives behind praying why are you praying every day what is the motive behind why are you reading the word every day what is the motive behind why are you going to the church every sunday and worshiping the lord what is the motive behind why are you in the choir <laughs> what is the motive behind why do you want to become a church leader an elder of the church or a pastor why do you want to get involved in god's service suddenly why do you want to give generously to god's work Or why do you want to help the poor you know I, it may look very funny for you when i when i put all this list my dear friends but there are people who have different motives of doing these things why do they want to become a church elder not because they want to serve god they have a different motive behind why do you want to run a church not really to take care of the congregation you have a motive behind and those motives god knows it nobody else knows it and those motives will be brought to the judgment the lord will judge all our secrets all our secrets and these secrets are the motives are the motives motive behind everything that we do today is it with a real truthful heart something really we do for because we love god out of a out of a love for god out of a commitment for god or is there a different motive behind all that we do today you know that's very important god will judge all our secrets which means our motives and secondly god will judge every vain word that we speak look at matthew's gospel chapter 12 Matthew's gospel chapter 12 I'm reading verse 36 I'm reading verse 36 
But I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on that day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. Are you listening? You will be judged for every vain word that you have spoken. What does that mean? People speak hurting words. Words that can pierce the heart. Words of pride. Lying. Speak filthy words. They make a false allegations on somebody. They blasphemy. They mock at people. Make a mockery. And sometimes the people tamper God's word. They distort God's word and speak as they like. You know, all this will be taken into consideration, my dear friends. All these words, every vain word will be brought into judgment. And we are going to give an account of every vain word that we spoke. Every filthy word, every false allegation, every lie, every hurting word. The mockery that we make at others. All those things will be brought to the judgment. And what is the third thing that God is talking here? He will judge your deeds. That's what the revelation says. Uh, in chapter 20, come back to chapter 20. Verse 12. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. <laughs> according to what they have done as recorded in the books. So it reveals something else to us. Every action, every deed is been recorded. How terrifying. How fearful it is. You know, God records. Can he record? Yes. See, I am recording my message here. The video message that I am giving now is being recorded. And tomorrow if I deny the speech, if I say I did not say like this, you can just uh, switch this recording on and uh, you can put it before me. And everything is clear. Everything is open. I cannot hide. I only recorded this. If man can record it, man's voice, why can't God record all our actions? God can easily record all our actions. What are the actions? Bad habits. Sinful habits. Drinking alcohol. Adultery. Robbery. Pornography. Drug addiction. Cheating. Murder, rape, homosexuality, lesbianism. You talk whatever you want to say. Mention anything that is of sin in this world. And people who are indulged in that kind of a sin. Every sin has been recorded. Recorded. And you cannot deny. When you stand before the judgment seat of God. I don't think you can deny you have to accept. You have to accept, my dear friends. But the great confirmation, great joy is that. In Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What a great comfort that is. No condemnation. If you are in Christ Jesus. My dear friends, we are in the grace period now, I tell you. The Lord is showing a lot of grace towards us. He is willing to forgive us. However big your sin is, however great a sinner you are, the Lord is willing to forgive you today. And if you ask for forgiveness, you confess your sins. The Lord will cleanse you in his blood. And your name will be written in the book of life. In John's gospel chapter 5. Verse 24 says. Truly, truly I say to you. Whoever hears my word. And believes him who sent me. Has eternal life. He does not come into judgment. 
but has passed from death to life what a great comfort that is what a great comfort what a hope it is for us we are passing from judgment into life from death to life we don't go into judgment at all if you believe in the lord jesus christ that's why we see in the 20th chapter verse 15 the last verse revelation chapter 20 verse 15 the lake uh, probably i will see i'll i'll read 14 and 15 then the death and the hates will throw away were thrown into the lake of fire the lake of fire is the second death anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire that's the final destiny of that person thrown into the lake of fire that's the final destiny of the person remember my dear friends the judgment seat is there the judgment of god is there it is there nobody can escape that judgment from god the lord is going to judge our motives secrets the lord is going to judge every vain word that we speak and the lord is going to judge every action every deed that we have done nobody can escape but who can escape only those whose names are written in the book of life they will escape they will escape i don't know who you are this evening but i have a concern for you i don't want you to miss out from that book of life i don't want your name to be missed out from the book of life you know when i look at this zoom meeting when i look at all your uh, gadgets that you are using i can see your names written there that's not enough but our names should be written in the book of life if your name is there you will not be condemned you will not be thrown into hell the lord will bless you the lord will not condemn you he will commend you he will appreciate you for the faithful life that you have lived that's true my dear friends shall we make a commitment to god this evening let's not go and stand before him in shame the lord is giving opportunities after opportunities for us to confess our sins and commit ourselves to him let's do that now shall we shall we all close our eyes right now i want every eye to be closed i want every head to be bowed down please everybody 